Hello everybody, Crazy Dirt Girl slash Kawaii Kitties here. Um, you know, always have an identity crisis. Anyways, today I am talking about Heart Catch Pretty Cure and Sweet Pretty Cure and Doki Doki Pretty Cure. You know, I just realized I was talking about three because my brain was mainly going to, I think it was Sweet and Doki Doki and then it was going to only Heart Catch and Doki Doki and it always exclude one. So it looks like we're talking about three Pretty Cure series that uh, I had speed paints for on the YouTube channel, but you know, I never made a commentary or anything. I thought about them. So let's start with the oldest one, Heart Catch. So Heart Catch Pretty Cure is really good. Um, I have a debate um, on either if like Doki Doki or Heart Catch are like the best seasons, maybe even Hugato I could put into that fight, but I'm not talking about Hugato right now. So, Heart Catch Pretty Cure is about um, Tsubomi and um, how she becomes a Pretty Cure and then we start going on to like more cures. So Tsubomi is a quiet shy girl who, um, you know, when she was a kid I'm pretty sure she, I'm not gonna, I'm not 100% sure because I've been watching the show in a year, but um, um, during her childhood she had to like go with her grandma a lot. Um, because her parents had to work, I'm pretty sure. Um, I'm not 100% sure. It's been a moment. So she's, like, really shy. And it kind of, like, you know, it's a fear for her. Um, yeah. And then, like, whenever she becomes a Cure, um, Cure Blossom with her fairy, I cannot remember the name of. Um, you know, she is called the worst pretty Cure. Because she's not that great at it. Um, as she doesn't defeat the villain the first time, but then as you go on, like, go on throughout the season, she just becomes a stronger and stronger character. Um, now I'm going on to Cure Marine, or... I had another brain fart. Erica. I, I remember that off of my head. I don't know, I'm just being janky. So Erica is a super playful blue cure. I think she's our first extremely super super playful blue cure. You could kind of count Cure Berry in the aspect that she's like not as typically blue as it gets today, but like Erica is really different. So Erica is super fashiony. She loves fashion, um, but as well she has anxiety because of like her sister and how she really wants to be like her. And it's really interesting. And as well, she doesn't really know how to control her emotions. Or not, I mean, I mean, she doesn't know her boundaries a lot of times. So she kind of has to, like, learn how, like, boundaries work. And how she, like, just can't say certain things at a certain time all the time. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. I think Erica's pretty nice, but, like... She gets a little overbearing after a while. Oh, um, I will admit she started to get on my nerves. Also, Subomi did, like, after, like, 23 episodes of them just saying the same catchphrase. Catchphrases, I just started getting tired of it because of the bad pillar. But now on to our next character. Now I'm going to be talking about Yuri um, or Cure Moon Knight. So she's actually the fourth cure. Um, but the reason I'm talking, you know, about her is because, um, she's actually kind of vital, even towards, like, the start of the series, because at first we don't know who the cure is in Tsubomi's dream, which ends up having the Erica, and then you know, Sunshine, all that stuff. But, um, yeah, she's basically, um, was the only, like, back in the past was originally, like, the only pre-cure for her generation, essentially, um... And her fairy got killed. Um, it wasn't like the, like it wasn't funny at all. Like it was just really serious and they did not try to like, you know, make it funny. They actually took it seriously, which is great for this franchise. Um, comp you know, I mean, they did that back then. Just in today's standards, just look at Delicious Party when it comes to their fairies crying and dying. And I mean, they don't die, but like, you know, anyways, um, yeah, and she had to deal with that loss. It was just upset, like, for a large amount of the first portion. 
but also protected, um, you know, Sub Subomi and Erica, and even Itsuki or Kira Sunshine, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute. Um, you know, whenever they were getting attacked uh, by Dark Pretty Care, who is a whole nother point I have to talk about because it's just really good. So, um, she's really awesome. She's like probably one of my, like, she is like top contender cure like she's in between cures like i have a few cures that i just can't pick a favorite over which is cure sunshine cure moonlight and maybe freaking oh my god oh my god oh my god cure etowale 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 i don't know how to say it i love her maybe not cure etowale i'm not sure maybe even cure the mayor but like she is like a top contender we're real like i can't choose in between the two like i love her you just have to watch it for yourself when it comes to cure moonlight and how amazing she is and how cool of a character she is she is an absolute boss now i'm going to be talking about itsuki or cure sunshine so cure sunshine is the third pretty here you know came before cure moon eh came before Cure Moonlight when it came to the lineup of joining the team or just you know she was like before you know Cure Moonlight's power were, powers were like undormant um you know so um I mean not undormant but came before Cure Moonlight's yeah I, I, my bad I'm right so um she um really wasn't in the show or really wasn't important until episode 23 when she joined because her brother is sick and you know she had to fight against him and this battle and became cure sunshine and she actually has to like dress up as a dude for family reasons but um yeah uh some people think that's like questionable i can't blame anybody Personally, I like I just love her attacks and stuff. I want that shiny tambourine and like how cool she is in general. She's so freaking awesome. That's also why she's a top contender because she's so awesome and it's so cool. And she actually gets the business because like for the first half of the series, like I swear, Subomi and Erica were just ah, like the, the 23 episodes, it was just so boring. Because they wouldn't even try to, like, you know, purify the villains. They would just attack them. I mean, attack the whatever I think they were called. Like, yeah, fix the heart flowery things. Yeah, that's all they did. But, um, yeah. Now we're going to move on to another important character, which is Grand, like, the grandma of Subomi. So her grandma was actually um, a past precure called Cure Flower. She also has a fairy named Kope, 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 Kope-sama, um, you know, and she ends up coming at some point in this show, and it's really cool, you know, big boss guy, you know, um, but it really represents hard catch pretty cure and, like, past generation things like that, so it's really interesting. Now we're gonna go on to Cure, or not, not Cure, but we're gonna go on to Dark pretty cure so dark pretty cure was created by cure moonlight's dad because a bunch of stuff happened and then like he needed to craft another daughter um so it was really interesting whenever cure moonlight found out that dark pretty cure was her sister um yeah and just a lot of emotional things happening there because she was super evil um you know until like things started going down um, with the help of Subomi, because she's a pink cure, I guess, you know, they fixed it, um, yeah. The animation is also really good for this season. Um, the big bad was okay, um, pretty strong, you know. A lot of the episodes are really good, but I would definitely, like, use a filler list on this show if, if they had one. Like, there's just way too much, like, way too many pointless episodes in this season, and I don't really see a lot of people saying that. The only other person I've heard like saying there are like way too many filler episodes is Ace and Zone. Because the filler just starts getting really, really bad. Like just god-awful filler that you just don't want to watch ever again. 
So now I'm going to be, um, wait, no, no, wait. So, um, Heart Catch Breaker is really good. Um, you should really watch it. Now we are going on to Sweet Pretty Care. So, Sweet Pretty Care is a fun season to watch. It is not the best season, but it is a really fun season to watch. So, we start off with our main character, um, Pink Weed, Hibiki. Um, so Hibiki, um, you know, is Gear Melody. Um, but she cannot change the Gear Melody herself, so we need Cure Rhythm who is Kanade and Kanade and Hibiki really don't like each other at the start of the show because of a dumb conflict actually so um you know after not meeting once for some reason I don't know but like you know um they end up kind of having to you know go through that sort of kind of they really don't get along for like a long first like the long first half of the series but um you know they change into pre gear together because they just can't do it alone. I'm pretty sure I can't. I don't think they defeated the villain first try. Now that I think about it, it's been a minute. Um, but you know they're they're really they're they're interesting. I like them both. They have a really interesting dynamic, kind of like Nagisa and Honika. Um, mine is like you know you can separate them a bit more, but they're they're still really together. But I can easily pick. A favorite out of both of them and now um, I am going to talk about Kirby so Kirby was originally like the villain of Sweet Breaker um, but you know um, she turned good after some brainwashing stuff um, you know Kirby I really like her she's so awesome with the guitar um, she was actually a cat um, you know, a cat before she became human, essentially, really. She had this bracelet thing that, not bracelet, necklace, that let her become human. And she would try to get these fairy tone things from he became Kanade with their dumb, 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 adorable cat fairy thing, Hummy. I love Hummy, you're so adorable. Mine is you're so stupid and I hate you. So, um, I just love Hummy. And for how cute Hummy looks, but that's really it, because Hummy is so stupid. Anyways, like you know, she would always like trick Hummy because they used to be close friends way back in their kingdom when they were very young, before you know, she, you know, before um, Kirby got just you know got jealous. Uh, yeah. So. She essentially um, became good after realizing the error of her ways. Um, so, so Ellen, I mean Erin. Yeah, that's her name. I keep forgetting her name. Like, I'm pretty sure she do, she gets called like multiple things by the show. So I have a really hard time just, you know, calling for the proper thing. Now we're gonna go on to my favorite cure of the season. Cure Beat. That just sounded like meat, didn't it? Cure Beat. So Cure Beat um, is actually an 11 year old child and she doesn't appear in the show at first as her pretty cure parents. She appears as this masked figure thing. And it's really cool because everybody's like, who is Cure Muse? And um, people start blaming Ellen. Oh wait, Ugh, I'm stupid. Yeah, because Cure Beat, Ellen, Ellen. I'm pretty sure they mistake ours. Like when it comes to English, like yeah, Ellen. Yeah, not Ellen. I thought that was off. It was because that's how they say it. In <laughs> that's how they say it in like Japanese. But um, they confuse her for whenever she's a villain, and it's just a whole ton, ton, a ton, a ton of things, and it gets really interesting until you find out. Like they kind of borrow from Heartcatch on this aspect that the one of you know one of the villains are the dad or whatever, and it's a big deal. Um, 
and we kind of find that out that the head honcho that is really the head honcho is actually her dad and we got brainwashed which was really interesting to see um her powers are so freaking cool and she's such a oh my god she's so cool like oh my god she's only 11 and she's already making moves like when i tell you this girl is so awesome some people don't like her but i just don't understand it makes no sense to me how you cannot like your muse like your muse your muse is just way too freaking awesome for everybody <laughs> i'm gonna be completely honest and she's smart yeah general q, q ah your muse is just way too freaking awesome for her own good. Now I'm gonna talk about the three um, villain guys. Oh my god, they are one of the like they are some of the most annoying villains in this freaking franchise. I forgot to mention that I thought that the you know hard catch preacher villains were meh. I didn't really care about them. I can barely remember squat about them. But um, oh my god, these are like some of the most annoying villains maybe even the most freaking annoying villains the trio at least because like yeah and their designs the villain designs and like the um Kiramuse's mom who's a queen you know because Kiramuse is a princess I forgot to mention that um all of their designs are so bad like all of the, like pretty much any design for like not main characters in this season are just atrocious like i can't explain how bad they are um there were also kind of a lot of like you know things like that this season i didn't really notice it because i was having too much fun with this season because i've always like really wanted to watch it and i love the cures cures designs not the villains the cures so um uh because of a um i'm pretty sure like 2011 uh let me look it up i i think there was an earthquake in japan yeah there was an earthquake and a tsunami in japan in 2011 so they had to change up a lot of things and make it more positive which kind of resulted in smile pretty cure being a super you know happy go lucky season a pretty cure sort of even though it had some deeper things, I'm getting off subject, but, um, they had to cut back a lot of the content, so what we see from Sweet Pretty Cure now is not what we would have gotten if that didn't happen, like, the first few episodes Sweet Pretty Cure started in. Um, so, there were just a lot of changes that had to be made to Sweet Pretty Cure, and a lot of people, um, apparently don't really like Sweet like that. I love, I love Sweet because it's so much fun to watch. Um... Yeah, I'm in here for the fun. And that's one thing I really noticed, like, while making these pretty, like, while just watching every single season of Pretty Cure, because I have watched all of them, is that, you know, I don't hate any of the seasons. And you would expect me to, you know, hate some. But I just never have. Just, you know, really interesting. Um, whenever you watch every single season of the show, you know, just really understanding how you feel about, you know. Okay. Now I'm gonna get on to my really big fight in between Hard Catch and Doki Doki. We're doing Doki Doki Pretty Care. So now that I'm talking about Doki Doki Pretty Care, I have to talk about how, like, how unpopular it is as a season and how much people hate it. So, I think the only reason why people hate this season is because it's unique. Um, it is, like, the only Pretty Cure season ever that has a constant running plot that isn't just, like, a one and off episode thing sometimes, you know, like, they just, or, like, you know, it's not like, you know, oh, big thing happens this episode, we go calm this episode. Things just keep going in Doki Doki Pretty Care, which is one of its strongest points. And I'm pretty sure if you were not watching, you know, Pretty Care all the time, 
and you were a beginner at this series, uh, you would really like Doki Doki Pretty Cure because it's probably the least repetitive Pretty Cure season. Because even Hard Catch, I love Hard Catch, but it is so repetitive. The only thing that gets repetitive in this season really are the attacks. But even those get replaced at some point and the episode's content at least stays interesting. Um, yeah, so I'm going to start off with Mana Ida, the most hated character of this season. So she's Cure Heart. People like to call her a Mary Sue. She is not a Mary Sue. A Mana, you know, is a very energetic person and she loves to help people, but she helps people so much that she overexerts herself. Which makes it really interesting, because she's always wanting to help people, but like, you know, she screws herself over. And she also has to do with the fact that, like, sometimes she wants things to be, like, you know, perfect, but they don't always go her way. Um, she's a very responsible, good main character that I don't hate. Um, yeah. I like her a lot, and her fairy partner is also really good. So, now I'm gonna talk about Rika. So, Rika is the second cure um, cure diamond um she is very calm typical blue cure um but um you know um she is kind of like mana's like you know the person who watches over mana because mana is super hyper energetic and she kind of takes care of her in this sense of like don't overexert yourself so it's a really good friendship between the two of them um she wants to become a doctor typical blue cure but she also does what are those card things called? She does this card thing, Japanese thing. I can't think of what it's called right now. But um, she also has a really interesting dynamic with one of the villains where it kind of becomes a romance thing for like an episode and it just keeps going. Sort of, you know, in the fandom. Um, I like her a lot. She's really mature. Okay, so now we're going to talk about Cure Rosetta. So Cure Rosetta, ah, Cure Rosetta slash Alice, you know. Alice is a rich girl. She's the Batman cure of the group. Yeah, she gets like probably like the least development um, when it comes to, you know, her being a cure. But um, she is just funny and just a great person to be there. She's super sweet and nice, but like the fact that she's rich and has a, a butler and like she can literally like literally can do anything she wants. Heck. Even all the events that start the show happen at her freaking, like, at her building, like, her buildings she owns. So, it's really, <laughs> it's really great. I love her. And she's, like, a really cool shielding cure. She has to be the best cure when it comes to shielding because, literally, um, she split her shield in half. That's how freaking cool she is compared to a lot of other shield cures. Now we're going to talk about, um, you know, the super important Cure Sword. So, Cure Sword is the probably, like, super, super, super important character. So she actually starts the show, um, because she's getting attacked, her kingdom's getting attacked, and then, you know, she has to deal with the fact that her princess is gone, and she has to cope with it, so she starts to sing as a way to find her princess but you know after she makes friends with mana after like a ton of things where mana like where she doesn't understand mana first and doesn't get along with her you know their friendship kicks off with every single character like uh alice you know it starts to work out so the girls essentially you know form a bond and they go and do things together to look for the queen and you know they help each other out, like fighting villains and stuff, and as things keep going on, things just keep getting better. So she's really serious. She's super serious and just starts to loosen up at the like, you know, in the show. And she also like causes a lot of events to happen or the trigger. So it's really good that she's a catalyst when it comes to being a main character, sorta. So yeah. Now I'm gonna talk about Cure Ace or Agari. So, Cure Ace, um, Agri, you know, um, she's like one of the most controversial char controversial characters when it comes to this show. Um, it, 
she's actually another reason why people hate the show is because of the way she bursts in because we had this other character named Regina and she was getting you know you know villain to cure treatment kind of like Ellen from Sweet Pretty Cure like I just talked about a minute ago so um she's really like she was really strict when it came to like, every single character and like people didn't like that she even took cure like took cure hearts thing that i think lovelies something like that i think that that's what it was called and took it so she couldn't become a pretty cure and she was like really strict but then as you get to know her um you find out that she was a baby born <laughs> um you know like she's basically the good side of the queen and she, you know, was found by this old lady, um, you know, who took her in. And, um, she just wanted to be the best person, you know, she could be, um, because she just really, she just wanted everybody to be the best, you know, and, um, she eventually relaxes and starts to care about the girls and becomes not as much of, like, not as rude and really starts to care for her team um yeah and she's super important um yeah and now i'm gonna talk about regina so regina i just talked about her a minute ago how people were mad about how her how, like how she didn't become a mid-season cure so essentially regina um met mana at first and um she wanted to be besties with her and um, ended up affecting the rest of the friend group where everybody was like, hey, you know, you can't do that and you can't stop it. And then like, you know, um, <laughs> Kenzaki just could not agree with it. Cure, you know, cure sword Kenzaki, um, could not agree with it. And she was like, hey, I'm not going to be friends with this girl, um, because she's evil and, they have to go through all that stuff and they everybody kind of becomes friends then towards the end of the show kenzaki ends up being like hey you know what i understand this girl more now so she tried singing a song to get her into her heart which was a really good episode by the way and it sort of works and yeah she's super important to the plot because she's the bad half of the queen or not the not necessarily the bad half of the queen i guess She's the selfish part of the queen, as Augury is the selfless part of the queen. And you know what ends up happening? Because the queen splits herself apart, they have to make a merch toy. And that creates I love. Um, essentially, um, I chan is a baby that hatched out of an egg from the night guy, who also came from the kingdom, who was also the queen's wife. Or was it princess? Why am I calling her a queen? The princess's wife. I mean, not wife, fiance. I mean, yeah, they're fiance with each other. And, you know, they don't know that at first, but then things kind of happen, you know? So, um, they end up, you know, getting her and have to take care of this kid thing. And there's a whole arc about it, um, in the middle. I mean, not the middle, the end of the show. So, yeah. Now I'm going to talk about the villains. So, we have our big bad, you know, um, the princess's dad, because he was being selfish, you know, um, her, you know, his, the princess had, like, a disease, um, and the kingdom was gonna, like, die if, you know, he took this thingy, um, took the darkness to, you know, make his daughter better, and he took the darkness, um, because it's really hard to pick him between his daughter and the kingdom. Um, so, basically, the whole kingdom gets screwed over. And, yeah, so we have the three, or I guess nine villains now that, I, no, seven villains. You know, they're kind of based off the seven deadly sins, but two of them um, don't appear in the actual show. For the main villains, um, we have three. Um, so, uh, I can't remember which of the seven deadly sins they were, but they were a pretty good trio. They're some of the most entertaining villains, I think. They're pretty funny when it comes to it. Um, so, um, we also have two extra villains, 
that dream, but then they got killed and turned into rings. So, uh, those rings got destroyed. And yeah. Um, so this season of Pretty Hair was really good. I know I've kind of had, like, you know, a super duper 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 fast recap of it. That's because I'm running out of time and I have to go somewhere. So, um, you know, really hope you enjoyed it. Um, I also forgot to mention in the last video for Shiny Luminous that there were some episodes where she didn't do anything. So, it was kind of annoying. It, um, that, that's not relevant to this um, video. It's relevant to last video. So, thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. Bye.